and fast with Sensodyne Rapid Action for clinically proven relief in 60 seconds. Welcome to the Cynics Android TV Lounge. It is elegant. Angaleo design exclusive. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. You don't even have to put a wall bracket. Yes. These promotions will be running from the 15th to the 21st of July. J. Mumivya kichwa na kusesha amani. Kaluma Strong utuliza mumivya kichwa, mumivya mwili, na hata uondoa joto jingi mwilini. Kaluma Strong ina aspirin kama kiungo. Maumivya kizidi, muone daktari. Do you need to sanitize or disinfect your hospital, school, factory, property or community to ensure prevention and spread of COVID-19? Shop and buy 254 brings you world-class foggers and fogging services right to your doorstep. Fogging disinfects both air and surfaces. This is also effective in disinfecting prevention and treatment of diseases and pests in livestock farming. To buy your Fogas or get fogging services, call 0722 748074 or email shop and buy254 at gmail.com. Stay safe. The COVID-19 fight is a collective responsibility. Get an 8-acre prime residential plot with soil merchants in Kisamis along Magadi Road, a few minutes from the vibrant Kiserian town. Electricity and borehole water available at 148,000 Kenya shillings for cash buyers or 195,000 Kenya shillings for installment buyers. Pay 30% deposit and clear the balance in six months. Viewing is daily and will be done within the guidelines of COVID-19. SMS plot to 21595 for details. Buy today. Build tomorrow. This is NTV. Good evening, thanks for joining us this Tuesday night on NTV Tonight. We start off with a look at the global numbers and there are over 13 million cases of COVID-19 around the world with the global death toll standing at over 577,000. Now in Africa, the number of cases are inching closer to 616,000 while uh, th over 13.5 thousand people have died. And in the US, 3.5 million people have been infected and the virus has killed over 138,000 people. A check of Kenya's numbers in just a moment, but first, these are the day's top stories. Tonight, the numbers are still rising. Nearly 500 people test positive in a day. Also tonight, COVID-19 makes for painful labour for Pumwani Hospital's health workers. Out of the 290 who are tested, 41 turned positive. Hope, despair and what to expect for expectant and new mums. Plus, how will places of worship implement the strict reopening protocols? Church yetu ni 1 to 15,000 seating capacity. 
na tulipoangalia hiyo 100 ni kama kuweka maji ya ngilazi kwa drum ya 10000 liters and also tonight is it the end of the road for kirinyaga county <laughs> mcas want a breakup ntv tonight with smriti vidyarthi and tonight joining us in sign language interpretation is flora atiano now it has been 117 days of soaring numbers and a devastating loss of life with occasional tales of triumph as the country battles the coronavirus pandemic and tonight it's yet another bleak milestone as the country recorded the highest number of infections in a single day 497 people tested positive in the last 24 hours from 4,992 samples, raising our total caseload now to 10,791. Well, at the same time, 71 people have been discharged from various hospitals, bringing the total number of recoveries to 3,071. Five more people have succumbed to the disease, and now the national death toll is at 202. Nairobi County leads with nine, I beg your pardon, 292 new cases. Kiambu has 62, Kajado 51, Machakos 30, Mombasa 28, Busia 10, Wasingishu 6, Nakuru 5, Makweni, Narok, Nyeri, Meru, Kakamega, Kericho, Kilifi, Laikipia and Nandi all recorded less than five cases. 480 of those newly infected are Kenyan nationals, while 17 are foreigners. Key health care services at the Pumwani Maternity Hospital have been scaled down to emergencies only after tens of members of staff tested positive for the coronavirus. It is, however, unclear how the staff members contracted the disease. And as our health reporter Yunus Omolo now tells us, the management says no patient has been infected as a result. The Acting Director General of Health, Patrick Amoth, will be the bearer of bad news for the country's largest maternity hospital. Of 291 samples collected from the facility in a targeted mass testing exercise, 41 staff members have tested positive for the coronavirus, 19 are clinical staff, while 22 are support staff. There's a lot of community infection, so we cannot say our staff got the infection here or in the community where they come from because they are members of the community like everybody else. Among the 19 clinical staff spread across various cadres are 14 nurses from the newborn unit, theater, delivery, among other departments. Two are medical officers, one a lab technician, and two clinical officers. 41 have been on home-based isolation. Two actually have been decided from home-based isolation care. And the, rest, the remaining 39 are doing well. Nobody has gone to hospital for care. Consequentially, the hospital has sent a number of its staff into isolation and quarantine to curb a possible further spread. Now, services are extremely limited. We do have uh, Isli Health Center and Gara Health Centers, which are able to take up some of the deliveries, normal deliveries. To assist Pumwani. The hospital, however, says none of the patients was directly infected by the healthcare workers. Dr. John Murima, the medical superintendent, says prior to this, only three mothers had tested positive a couple of months back. And, uh, the staff members of the Pumwani Hospital to test positive are among 429 frontline medical workers who have now contracted the disease, according to the Ministry of Health. This is 4.1% of the total virus caseload. As the pace is slowing down in the busiest maternity hospital in the country, the Nairobi Metropolitan Services and the Ministry of Health is faced with the need for speed to ensure safe maternal delivery for mothers, especially now during the pandemic. Eunice Omolo, NTV, Nairobi. Now, most places of worship are yet to reopen, despite a directive allowing them to, taking effect today. 
Some churches, mosques and temples argue that the strict guidelines imposed by the government may not be practicable for their congregants and way of worship. But as Ngina Kirori reports, some have gone ahead to open their doors, albeit with strict controls. On the day the Interfaith Council stated that churches can reopen, some still opt to remain closed. Among the key concerns include what criteria would be used to determine which congregants would enter the church. This, they say, is primarily because of the difference in the size of these spaces across the country. For instance, here, at the redeemed Gospel Church in Huruma, the seating capacity is 15,000. Allowing strictly 100 congregants would present a myriad of challenges, the clergy says. Nilipo angalia hiyo 100 ni kama kueka maji ya ngilazi kwa ndramu ya 10,000 leaders. The president also directed that services be conducted for a maximum of one hour, but that too is a tall order. I look at it, I look at it like this. If you are given a kideri, that is maize, together with maragwe, and you are told to cook that maragwe within one hour, even if we are using that fire which they use to burn metals, that kideri will not be ready. However, some mosques have reopened, although under strict guidelines. Prayer rows have now been divided with signs, reminding those entering not to crowd. Hand washing stations have also been set up at the entrance. As a Muslim, prayer is very important in our life. So the, all the Muslims in this area are very happy uh, to, to come and pray to the masjid, to the mosque, and also uh, follow the, the restrictions and the the, the rules and regulation uh, laid by the Minister of Health. But worship leaders say they are fully aware of the risk of reinfection. We are afraid that uh, that is happening, the, the numbers are, are going up, but mostly the elderly people are stay, uh, decided to stay at home. Gena Kirori, NTV. All right, that's something that we will be keeping a close eye on. Now it is clear that the COVID-19 pandemic is here to stay, at least for some time. And with this new normal, prevention is largely a personal responsibility. So here's a reminder for you on the symptoms of the coronavirus. Zainab Ismail has the details. Zainab? Thanks, Smriti. Now, before I begin, this is what the Emergency Response Committee said about a month ago. This war is not a sprint. This is actually a marathon. And therefore, we must be psychologically prepared for it. Not a sprint, but a marathon. And we tend to be a little forgetful sometimes. You see, it has already been established that the virus affects people in different ways. However, most infected people have developed mild to moderate illness and even recover without hospitalization. Now, the World Health Organization lists them as fever, a dry cough and tiredness, which are at the top of the list. Now be on the watch out for these. And then there are other symptoms as well, like feeling aches and pains, nasal congestion, headache, sore throat, diarrhea, a rush on the skin or discoloration of fingers or even toes. What I also found very interesting as well is that those infected with COVID-19 also had a loss of taste or smell. Now this symptom was added to the list just the other day. And then there are also serious symptoms which include difficulty in breathing or shortness of breath, feeling chest pain or pressure, and also loss of speech or movement. Now these symptoms are usually mild and begin gradually. Some people become infected but only have very mild symptoms or are asymptomatic, which essentially means they don't even exhibit any symptoms. But it has been advised that you should seek immediate medical attention if you have these serious symptoms. However, always call before visiting the health facility. You know, this will prevent the spread of the virus in case you have it. On average, it takes about five to six days from when someone is infected with the virus for symptoms to show, although it can take up to 14 days. That's why those who exhibit some of the mild symptoms are advised to stay home and manage the symptoms first. So as you go about your life, make sure you're aware of your health and that of those 
close to you. Back to you, Smriti. Zainab, thanks very much. We always need a reminder now and again. So remember, stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask and sanitize and of course, social distance. Now, in the meantime, the Ministry of Health is calling on Kenyans not to stigmatize those who've been infected by the coronavirus, as this only slows down the fight against the pandemic. Here now is the health uh, Chief uh, Assistant Cabinet. Here, here now is, uh, let's listen into this sound bite. I beg your pardon. We've seen different people discussing, you know, symptoms of COVID 19 patients, areas in which where they might have contracted, you know, profiling them and elevating, you know, stigma in the society. Again, this is something that does not add value to this fight of COVID 19 and ends up stigmatizing the situation and making it even harder for us to be able to maintain our containment measures for us to be able to work together, adopting a whole of society approach in dealing with this disease. It's important to note COVID-19 is a disease like any other. It's a disease like any other and we really need to emphasize this. And it is important to note that stigma really will not go a long way in terms of combating this disease. All right, elsewhere now, and the leadership dispute in the county government of Kirinyaga is now escalating weeks after a Senate Select Committee saved Governor Anne Waiguru from impeachment. A section of the members of the Assembly now want President Uhuru Kenyatta to dissolve the county government. And as Melita Oletengas reports, they plan to hit the ground running soon with a collection of signatures. <laughs> It is the new clarion call among the members of the County Assembly of Kirinyaga who have now vowed to collect signatures to call on the President to dissolve the county government. Embu tuvunje mbumbung, tuvunje the county government ya Kirinyaga, sote tuende nyumbani, tutaitisha viti upia, diyo wanjiku wa, Kenya, wa Kirinyaga waweza kufanyua kazi. Watu wa Kirinyaga wapate viongozi wenye watawaudumia, watakikisha ambasari hiko, watakikisha maji hiko, watakikisha barabara ziko sawa. According to Article 192 of the Constitution, a county government can be dissolved by the president either in the event of an emergency arising out of internal conflict or war or in any other exceptional circumstances. The decision by the MCAs comes barely a day after Governor Anwai Guru, through her Twitter handle, announced that she would not approve the 2020-2021 budget as passed by the county assembly. This is after the Assembly slashed and reassigned budget allocations to health, donor-funded programs and other statutory obligations. She cannot work with the budget and we cannot come to a consensus. I would ask the Wanjiko of Kirinyaga, let us find another way out because we cannot be held at ransom. So tunasema hii kitu ifuncho kasia, tuenda nyumbani, patu yangino achaguliwe, na kama nitarundi, tasema mungu wa santi. But as the MCAs collect signatures to petition the president to dissolve the county government, there are more hurdles ahead, including an investigation by an independent commission of inquiry and an authorization of suspension by the Senate. <laughs> Melita, Oletenges, and TV. Now, six counties are expected to be the biggest beneficiaries of the third generation formula proposed by the Senate Finance Committee on allocation of revenue to the counties. The committee says this will correct the wrongs of the last seven years. Our senior political affairs reporter Kennedy Muredi joins me now in studio to give us a breakdown of the new numbers and the points of departure in the new formula that have now become extremely divisive. Kennedy. Oh, well, thank you very much, Smriti. And the proposed third generation formula has split actually the Senate down right the middle, as you have said, and with political alliances now being set aside and the senators fighting for their political careers. There are six counties, as you have rightly said, that are to gain exponentially from this formula. And these counties are actually Nandi, according to the formula, is expected to gain about 1.3 billion shillings. Then you have Uasingishu County, which is expected to gain about 1.1 billion shillings. Then there is also Nakuru, which will gain 
1.1 billion shillings. Then you have Kiambu County, which is also expected to gain about 1 billion shillings. Kakamega, also 1 billion shillings. And Transoya County is also expected to gain 1 billion shillings. Then there is other counties that have benefited and are gaining from between 900 million shillings to about 100 million shillings. And these counties are Bungoma, Kirinyaga, Bomet, West Pokot, Baringo, Migori, Siaya, Kericho, Busia, Machakos, Laikipia, Embu, Meru, Kisumu, Elgeo, Marakwet, Nyandarwa, Nyeri, Lamu, Muranga, Kajado, Kisi, Homa Bay, and Nairobi County, which will gain about 123 million shillings. Now, Smirti, this matter about Nairobi has actually also been a contentious matter because it was expected that the amount of money that they will be gaining, uh, noting that there are people who come to Nairobi and it is estimated about 5 million people are in Nairobi during the day and 4 million people during the night, they were supposed to gain from this new formula, but that is not happening. Then there is also, however, those counties that have vast land masses but have a small population. And these counties are actually set to lose immensely with counties such as Wajir County losing a whooping 2 billion shillings. Then we have Mandera County and Marsabit each losing about 1.9 billion shillings. Then we also have Garissa which will be losing 1.6 billion shillings. Then we have Tanariva County which is expected to lose about 1.5 billion shillings, while Mombasa and Kwale will each lose 1 billion shillings. Now, Smith, Smith on this part of Mombasa County, it has actually been considered a very politically explosive matter because even in the senators they were trying to look at it. It is one of those counties that is that has been said to have campaigned and actually voted almost to the last man for opposition leader Raila Odinga. So it is a dicey matter when it comes to county and uh, a county like that which is considered to be contributing so much in terms of uh, revenue when it comes to tourism and all that losing about 1 billion shillings then it becomes a, a contentious matter and it is actually one of the reasons why they have decided to go back and actually look at it but other counties such as Narok, Isiolo, Kilifi, Turkana, Nyamira, Kitui, Makweni, Samburu, Taita Taveta, Tharakanithi and Vihiga will be losing between 970 million shillings, that is for the highest, and also 246 million shillings for the lowest, which is Vihiga County. Now, the Finance Committee chaired by Kirinyaga Senator Charles Kibiro says that it considered a number of issues in coming up with the formula, and the main aim, they say, was to correct the wrongs of the past, as you have said there. And for instance, the committee says that it focused on landmass and population, which had disadvantaged some of the counties before. Well, Smithy, there were varied reactions from senators when the proposals were tabled on the floor of the House Monday afternoon in a special sitting. Now, time for consensus has been given with various proposals on the table, such as the creation of a fund to cushion some of these counties that will lose. And this is a matter that probably we are looking at it being discussed next week or uh, if they will find a consensus because, Smitty, there was also another proposal that we should con continue with the second with a, with a second generation formula before we find consensus on how to move on with the third generation formula. But for now, we can only wait. Back to you, Smirti. All right, Kennedy, thanks for breaking it down for us. It is evident why that formula is so divisive, but it is something that we will, of course, keep tabs on. Uh, Kennedy Moradi there breaking it down for us. All right, we're taking a break now on NTV tonight, but check this out. It was a shocking and unusual sighting for people in Monrovia, California, after this bear was spotted strolling through a residential neighborhood. It was seen crossing paths with local residents and also dogs who were equally taken aback by the presence of the giant. The incident occurred before the COVID-19 pandemic. Stay with us. We'll be back.
Captain Cargo, your guide at Kenya Ports Authority today. I'm here to help you navigate through all the shipping and cargo processes at the port of Mombasa with utmost ease. So, if you want to know about our marine and cargo services and tariffs we charge, if you want to learn more about the cargo clearance processes for imports and exports, or if you are interested in our customer service standards, I'm Captain Cargo, always happy to show you the ways of the Port of Mombasa. For questions and to discover more, visit me at www.kpa.co.ke forward slash Captain Cargo. When the world changed, it made us go back to the simple joys and love the little things even more, like serving up your best, eating together and sharing more. Now, oh, we'll take nothing for granted. And always remember to taste the simple joys. Coca-Cola. Taste the simple joys. We have continued to receive reports of domestic violence. And I believe um, that we are in a situation where each one seems to be groping in the dark, there's a certain sense of, of loss. People are trying to find their feet in this new environment. Life expects responsibility from us and asks us to give the best of ourselves in the circumstances. Our following of Christ the Good Shepherd should enable us to have more compassion and concern for the vulnerable. These are the moments to mind the life of children. May the Lord give us the courage to care for each other and to be brave together, knowing that we are not alone. For the Good Shepherd, who shed his blood for us, is with us, to give us an assurance of life to the full. For a better tomorrow, don't forget to do the one, two, three with Colgate every night. IABIRI is ensuring that your travel experience is safe during these unprecedented times. Our network of over 40 bus companies has committed to maintaining highest standards of sanitation, providing water or sanitizers, checking all passengers' temperatures, and sterilizing waiting bays and buses frequently. Wear your mask and maintain social distance always, and sneeze or cough into your elbow. Book your ticket online via iABiri and use our cashless payment options to play your part to win the COVID-19 war. Vicente de Rosalong is part of a rebel They're group. Ruthless. And they really know how to play They're dirty. Too much. How could they do this to my dead father? Who is she? Is she one of Anna's accomplices? I'd like to file a report. What is it? It's about Anna de Masalam. I know what really happened to her. I'm sure they're looking for me. Sir, is it true you're responsible for killing Anna de Masalang and her father? Yes, it was really me. I killed them both. See? Daddy had nothing to do with it, Kael. And even I had no idea about what happened to her either. The threat to our group will grow larger by the second if we don't act now. So we have to be one step ahead. Are you sure we won't have a problem with him? We've already paid him for his services, Senator. Now I can proceed with my next plan, to eliminate Anna. Victory Gardens Kitengela by Optivan. This gated community is fully developed, filled with ultra-modern value additions. Call us today on 0790-300-300 or visit www.optivan.co.ke. Welcome back to NTV Tonight. Kitui Governor Charity Ngilu has received a temporary reprieve in the attempt to impeach her after the mover of the motion suspended the tabling of the motion in the county assembly. Peter Kilonzo says MCAs supporting the motion have seemingly backed out and disappeared. Naoma Sampao has more. The impeachment motion against Kitui Governor Charity Ngilu was to be tabled before the House on Wednesday. That may not be the case, however, as MCAs supporting the motion have reportedly gone missing. Four days now, they haven't been traced, and the mover of the motion is now seemingly standing alone. There are rumors that uh, these members are not being found in their wards, and probably they are locked up somewhere in the National Park. 
As a result, Kilonzo, who is also the county assembly majority leader, now says the motion has been suspended indefinitely. He, however, holds that he remains undeterred and firm in the quest to oust the governor. It is not uh, stopped. It is just going to be delayed. This is not the first time an impeachment attempt against the governor has experienced a setback. The motion had been slated for debate on June 29, 2020, but Governor Ngilu obtained conservatory orders from the High Court halting a debate. But last week, High Court Justice Weldon Korir dismissed Ngilu's petition as lacking merit, paving way for the tabling of the motion before the county assembly. He vita si vita ya kusaidia na kukombine na kuleta development kitui. Tunataka county assembly na county government. Washikane mkono. The MCS want Ngilu out on allegations of violating the constitution and provisions of the county government act, abuse of office and failure to account for public funds. The motion has cited the governor's failure to comply with the two-thirds gender rule in the appointments of members of the county executive committee. Nayoma Sampao, NTV. Elsewhere, tens of traders in Nairobi's Gikomba market are seeking an alternative site to spread their wares after the government brought down their stalls to give way for the construction of a road. Our reporter Ruth Samwe was there and now reports that the traders have been left without a stable source of income just days after an, an inferno raised down part of the market. Barely two weeks ago, a section of this market experienced a fire incident. And just when they are trying to recover from their losses, this morning they woke up to the demolition of their stalls that is meant to pave way for a road. Majority of the traders in shock are picking up the pieces from the rubble. Others are trying to sell what they salvage in hope of making some money for the day. The traders say authorities brought their stalls down without an alternative site. Chief Mbanyando alikuja huku wakapima na alituambia bada siku mbili tuondoe vitu atukua tumeondoa vitu zetu zote zilimbiwa zingine tinga tinga ikaribu. Juzi tundi otulijenga wakati moto tena ilikuja. First, there are no bills coming to Kenya. We don't have bills to sell. We are trying to get the little we can and then we find such things. This is basak. We are sad. We are mad. We don't know what to do. With no alternative source of income in the face of an economic downturn as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, the traders are now seeking an alternative. Juzi tukua kazi, tukua corona tu imetufungia kwa nyumba miezi mtatu. Juzi tu tumeanza kurudi. Yo hiyo tena mambo imetokea. Sa tunashidwa kwa ni sisi wanabiashara wa kikomba tu na haki ya kuongea. Ama biashara yetu kwa nini inadhurumiwa hivyo? Na tunalipa ushuru kwa kanjo kila mwezi. Maungu tunanunua, tukienda kuhusa kwa kititi. Sasa, sasa, atuna maungu, kuna pomolewa, hakuna mahali tumatavuta mbinu, vila tutapata mahali, pakunuwa nguo. Kwa sabu nguo sote, wanasema wanafungia kwa sto, na hakuna mahali watausia. This market has experienced three fire incidents since December 2019. The cause of the most recent one is yet to be established. Ruth Sarmui, NTV. And as the country is ravaged by the coronavirus, another silent epidemic is creeping up, that of teen pregnancies and limited access to reproductive health information and services. But as our reporter Gabriel Kudaka now reports, some providers of these crucial services are reaching out to the youth through digital platforms. Niko for man, niko 13 years, nilipata ball, na wazazi wangu bado wajijua. Like three months, that's when they, they knew my situation because my belly had already come out. Just two among hundreds of school-going children who have become part of the teenage pregnancy statistics. It is not just a number, but lives that are being lost as well. These 13 and 15-year-old girls will be mothers in the next few months. Is this because of lack of access to reproductive health information? Is that the only problem? In search for an answer, I started by following Valerio Diambo, a student at Rongo University, during a visit to a medical center in Homer Bay. Valerie is among the few lucky ones who are still able to procure reproductive health services. Most of her colleagues avoid hospitals out of fear of contracting coronavirus, among other factors. Accessing services in facility is so uh, hard. Also paying for services at the facilities. Bado niko chini wazazi, sawa ondo na wategemea, 
evening is survived. As an initiative, a youth group, Family Health Options Kenya, in Homer Bay County, has been moving door to door, encouraging their colleagues to seek such services. So behavior change is a key message that we really push out there. And in Nairobi, Nakuru, and Uwasin Gishu counties, the service providers have now taken to social media platforms such as WhatsApp to get in touch with the youth. Kuna yote nyusha iskia. Ninge request the government kama ineza waive the payments. Malipo enye mtu anenda na make hospitali kama yo ya kulipia lab. Maybe you want, unataka kupimwa STIs. The high number of teenage pregnancies that have been reported in various parts of the country perhaps points to the broken link in access to information on reproductive health. Medical experts, however, say that early pregnancies should not be the only concern for parents and youth, as there might be other grave consequences of indulging in early sexual activities. They cause actually the birthing system to be affected, so their future fertility will be affected definitely. They may not even have a baby. Kama sa isi tuko na msiano mdogo, 15 years, alishika mimba, alafu... Uh, kaka nyumbani kwa muda uh, kutoka huko damu ikafucha mingi ndio tutaka kufia kwa tumbo and here in lies a silent epidemic opinion is divided on the right time to introduce age appropriate comprehensive sex education in schools if it is about now teaching them about condoms teaching them about contraceptives teaching them about abortion teaching them is that really the right knowledge we are giving to our children ni wakati ambao kwamba ni umuhimu the health workers and religious leaders have heard their say. As for the youth, what say you? After I've delivered my baby to go back and finish my studies. If we continue behaving like this, the future will treat us abnormally. Gabriel Kudaka, NTV. All right, from that, COVID-19 patients with underlying conditions have been the hardest hit by the pandemic, perhaps. The country itself has pre-pandemic problems, making the war a tougher one. Well, tomorrow on team coverage, we count the cost of unfulfilled promises, corruption, Kenyans' bad habits, wanting policies and politics. Tune in from 9 p.m., but here now is a quick preview. The equipments that the hospitals have been getting are substandard gloves and face masks. This building here has got its fair share of criminals. There shall be no KCP for the year 2020. Surely, with all the technicals we have, we couldn't figure out a way to transition our children. We can do KCP. We will provide every child in primary school with a solar-powered laptop. There are very few. The last thing to do is to avoid the pitfall, to imagine that technology is the panacea to our problems. I mean, kama iko yo ugonjwa. 80% of our families live from hand to mouth. How do we learn and prepare ahead of the problem? Hashtag counting the cost tomorrow on team coverage Wednesday at 9 p.m. Do be sure to join us then. All right, we head into another breather and here's a reminder of the beauty of mother nature millions of flowers covered the hilly landscape of japan's hitachi seaside park earlier in the year blanketing more than four hectares of the park the great show of nature which usually attracts one million visitors in april and may alone had no audience to entertain this year though due to the covid 19 pandemic but just have a look at that The risk of illness causing germs is increasing. It is believed that the coronavirus can remain on surfaces in your home for up to nine days. Touching infected surfaces is one of the ways in which germs spread. Regularly disinfect your floors, countertops, and kitchen surfaces with bleach. And use an effective toilet cleaner inside and outside your toilet bowl. This message is brought to you by Medifacts, Jig, and Hapik. Enjoy the naturally appealing taste of our unique fruit blends. Every sip will delight your taste buds as they explode with flavor. It's only natural you invite your family and friends to your kind of world. 
an exciting world of six different flavors to pick from. Represent who you naturally are with Juice Juice Drink. Naturally ours with no added preservatives. A quality product from Bidco Africa. All day, we expect our mouth to do all kinds of things. That is why it needs all-round protection. New Oral-B Pro Health Toothpaste. Its advanced technology helps prevent both tooth holes and gum problems that can lead to tooth loss. It strengthens your teeth, giving them all-round protection. Because your mouth is doing more than you think. New Oral-B Pro Health. All-round protection for your whole mouth. Sona moja imetengenezwa kwa njia speciali ili kupambana na maumivu kwa haraka. Sona moja ina aspirin kama kiungo. Sona moja kitulizo kamili. Maumivu ya kizidi pata ushauri wa daktari. makes a Kenyan dental mom powerful. I encourage my kids to learn new things. And if they get hurt, I rely on the power of my Dettol's one capful. To fight germs, it's like my own first aid kit. My family needs protection from germs. I use the power of Dettol's one capful to disinfect surfaces and clothes to keep them clean and safe from germs. I trust the power of Dettol's one capful for bathing. The power of Dettol's one capful protects from up to 100 illness causing germs. Dettol, Kenya's number one antiseptic for fighting germs. Become a powerful Kenyan mom with Dettol. Be 100% sure. NTV Business News in association with Kenya Ports Authority. Growing business, enriching lives. And it's time for the business news now. And in an unusual occurrence, five out of 12 of the board of directors of Kenya Power have resigned all at once. This is according to a statement released by the Kenya Power's company secretary, Imelda Bore. The resignation comes on the back of dwindling performance by the monopoly electricity distributor, which saw its profits plunge by 92% in 2019. Judith Cherono with the details. It has been four months since Kenya Power's unaudited financials for the period ended June 2019 revealed that the electricity distributor's profit was nearly wiped out, having fallen by 92% to just 262 million shillings. Ever since, the company's share price has fallen by 26.7% to stand at just 1 shilling and 95 cents. As investors take a cautious position owing to the dwindling fortunes the company is facing, these rising headwinds would form the daunting entry of Bernard Ngugi, who took over as the company's managing director and CEO at the end of October 2019, stating that his first priority would be to steer the utilities company back to strong profitability. With the COVID-19 having struck, however, the monopoly distributor of electricity now faces an even more adverse business environment with its revenues being battered by the declining demand for electricity in the economy. Electricity sales account for 76% of Kenya Power's revenue. Whereas the statement from Kenya Power's company secretary, Imelda Bore, gives little information about the resignation of five directors all at once, it is clear that the company is confronting significant challenges as it looks to turn around its business fortunes. The government is the majority shareholder in Kenya Power, commanding a 50% stake and will be playing a key role in shaping the company's board going forward. 
On June 16, 2020, Kenya Power issued a cautionary statement warning investors that its performance for the year ending June 2020 will be much lower than that reported in the year ended June 2019. Judith Cherono, NTV. Now this one you're not going to like because consumers of diesel are the hardest hit in the latest review of pump prices by the Energy Regulatory and Petroleum Authority. On average, the maximum price of a litre of diesel will go up by 17 shillings and 30 cents, effective midnight to retail at 91 shillings and 87 cents here in Nairobi. Consumers of petrol will part with an extra 11 shillings and 38 cents per litre to pay a maximum price of 100 shillings and 48 cents. The maximum price of a litre of kerosene has been revised upward by 2 shillings and 98 cents to retail at 65 shillings and 45 cents in Nairobi. The new prices, which will be in force until August 14th, are inclusive of petroleum development levy on super and diesel as per legal notice number 124 of July 2020. Now, Parliament is considering tax reliefs for Kenya Airways in the National Aviation Management Bill expected by August this year. The national flag carrier resumes operations tomorrow after more than three months due to the coronavirus pandemic, even as the government finalizes on a re-nationalization plan. As the government prepares to resume full control of national carrier Kenya Airways by buying out minority shareholders, the need to make the airline more competitive and end the near decade loss making streak remains a headache. Yes. According to the man at the center of the renationalization legislative process, the airline could soon be exempted from paying some taxes. It is not very clear in the primary bill. But I'm sure the bill that will then come out of Parliament, I will, I will be able to negotiate with my friends and my colleagues in Parliament so that they see that sense that let us uh, relieve KQ of certain tax obligations in fuel, maybe in maintenance, and also buying the, the aircraft. In the renationalization plan, Kenya is emulating countries like Ethiopia, which runs aviation assets including state airlines and airports under a single company using funds from the more profitable subsidiaries to support the less lucrative ones. The economic and the, the business model upon which GQ is operating now is unsustainable and uncompetitive. What is it? It is, it is, it is, it is competing against other big players like uh, Ethiopian Air, uh -huh, Qatar, uh -huh, uh, uh, Emirates, uh -huh, and then now upcoming Rwanda. Those ones are operating on what you call government assistant, assistance model. The deal will also help strengthen KQ's weak balance sheet. With the new balance sheet, KQ will be able to renegotiate the, the leases they entered into in the, past, uh, in the past life, and they're likely to succeed. The airline resumes local passenger operations tomorrow, even as it prepares to resume international travel on August 1st. Victor Kiprop, NTV Business. Retail t chain Tuskies has now been barred by the courts from slashing employees' salaries. According to a ruling from the Employment and Labor Relations Court dated July 10, 2020, and signed by Justice uh, Brian uh, Onyaga, the Kenya Union of Commercial, Food and Allied Workers has secured temporary restraining orders, halting pay cuts planned by the retailer. The court has also directed Tuskies to release to its employees any amount withheld due to salary deductions. The Employment and Labor Relations Court had ruled that Tuskies has not shown how COVID-19 has made it difficult for them to negotiate with the union on matters regarding adjustment of salaries. NTV Business News in association with Kenya Ports Authority. Hello, I'm Captain Cargo. For questions and to discover more, visit me at www.kpa.co.ke forward slash Captain Cargo. All right, next up, we take another break, but have a look at how one restaurant in Montreal is managing social distancing. Now, instead of installing plexiglass dividers or removing tables, 
Le, Le Monarch restaurant is placing mannequins dressed by a stylist to maintain social distancing between its customers. So while dining, instead of having an empty seat by your side, you might just find a well-dressed plastic figure watching your every bite. Wa Kenya, he fight hatu kuchagua, lakini tuko na choice. Tuchague kujilinda, tuchague ku protect familia zetu, tuchague usafi. Kuosha mikono, kuosha manyumba zetu, ndio tulinde watoto wetu na tuvae mask. Future yetu iko mikononi mwetu. Kenya, let's do it for the ones we love. Let your little light shine for the world to see. Let your little light shine for the world to see. Ah, Helen Paul. Hello, madam. Would you like to join us on this mission? Yes, but how? Just one question for you. How do you keep your toilet clean? I use regular detergent and bleach for washing and removing yellow stains. I've been using it for years. Oh, madam, the regular detergents and bleach are used for washing clothes. To disinfect your toilet properly, you need Hapik 10X. It is specially made for germs and stains removal. Hapik gives 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergents and bleach. Wow, now I'm convinced, Helen Paul. Really? Yeah. Now that she's part of the mission, the next house is yours. Explorers of the night, wale wase wa kuhasulu siku, kustreama movies, music mix diehards, and gaming fanatics. We've heard you. It is now your time to fly your flag high. Do what you love, mpaka che na telcom. Join usiku sako with telcom night bundles that allow you rule the night at prices you love. Join our tribe, Usiku Sako Squad. Just dial star 544 hash from your telcom line and select the night bundle of your dreams. You are the legend. The night needs. Well, while much of the attention may be focused on battling the coronavirus pandemic, there are patients with various other medical conditions paying the ultimate price as a result of the preventative controls in various health facilities. And such is the story of a family mourning their kin who died from cancer while waiting for medical attention. Here now is Naoma Sampao. COVID-19 is cutting a jarring and unequal path as it disproportionately continues to burden those who even before had little. Such is the story of John Muli and his family. When John Muli took his wife to the Machakos Level 5 Hospital for emergency cancer attention, the hospital reportedly sought a COVID-19 clearance certificate before admitting her. I told her that she was going to go to ward. Mbaka umweka isolation kwa sababu wako na resource za COVID. Sasa uyu wange mweka maali kwa ICU direct za iyo, hatisa nge saidika. Without a clearance certificate, Elizabeth Muli died while waiting for medical attention. Mene wache na watoto. Mimi si kwa na expect kuni wacha. Kwa na nipatia morari na matumaini ya tuishi, tuweza kulea watoto. Kwa ina sikia ni kwa so lonely. Muli says he had taken Elizabeth to two other hospitals in the city and experienced a similar problem. But nothing compares to the uncertainty the family is now left in since the death of Elizabeth. Mbile angu. 
The body is in Machakos Hospital Mortuary awaiting the COVID-19 results. The late Elizabeth Odile exemplifies the struggle most patients with underlying medical conditions are grappling with in the face of the COVID-19 pandemic. Nayuma Sampao, NTV. All right, something that health officials certainly need to look into. Grace to that family. All right, now when schools reopen in January next year, if at all they do, dependent on the coronavirus situation, many learners will relapse in their learning perhaps because of the long break. However, for some, the damage will be worse and permanent. In your Daily Nation tomorrow, we look at everything that could go possibly wrong with our children during this long break, from suffering physical, sexual and psychological abuse to falling into delinquency for some or joining the damning statistics of teen pregnancies. Then we tell you uh, what you as a parent or guardian or responsible adult can do to protect uh, children. Plus, why tyranny of numbers is a factor in the Senate debate on the County Revenue Division formula. Don't miss your copy of The Daily Nation tomorrow. All right, the sports news is up next with Watson Karuma, but do check this one out. And it, is, it might be the unlikeliest uh, instructional video ever, but two Japanese uh, executives demonstrate how to, quote, scream inside your heart to avoid spreading COVID-19 while on a roller coaster. Suited and booted, these executives sat stiff-backed and straight-faced in silence trying ever so hard not to scream. Get an 8-acre prime residential plot with soil merchants in Kisamis along Magadi Road, a few minutes from the vibrant Kiserian town. Electricity and borehole water available at 148,000 Kenya shillings for cash buyers or 195,000 Kenya shillings for installment buyers. Pay 30% deposit and clear the balance in six months. Viewing is daily and will be done within the guidelines of COVID-19. SMS plot to 21595 for details. Details. Buy today. Build tomorrow. Breaking news from Molfix. Let's see what they're developing right now. Morphix pants with anatomic fit technology. New Morphix pants, an invention from babies for babies. You should also try Morphix. Welcome to NTV Sport. I'm Watson Karuma. Now, four presidential aspirants in the forthcoming Football Kenya Federation polls are mulling an alliance which they feel could be formidable enough to oster the incumbent. The four, Nicolas Musonye, Toham Barak, Lodvik Aduda, and Sami Sholei, say they are in talks to form what they describe as a super alliance. Even as the four candidates met, FKF President Nick Mwendoa met branch heads in a bid to augment grassroots support. The four candidates are also calling for the polls to be free and fair. The polls have been nullified twice in the past six months with the Sports Dispute Tribunal chairperson explaining that they did not meet the threshold of a free and fair exercise. Other candidates in the polls are former football boss Sami uh, Sam Moya and Herbert Mwachio. 
Former AFC Leopards captain Martin Imbalambala, who lost his eyesight in, in September of 2018, is desperately seeking financial assistance to enable him get special treatment. The 31-year-old has been undergoing treatment for the last two years, but the situation has now worsened. The midfielder was playing for National Super League side Vihiga United when he got the complications. The 31-year-old has been in darkness for about two years. The former AFC Leopards captain Martin Imbalambala has resigned to his village in Kisatero, Vihiga County. It's getting darker. Imbalambala explains how it all started. Okay, problem in Lianza. 2018, I was in the because problem in Lianza. I was in the morning, I was in the morning, so after mazoezi nikaingia kwa nyumba shughuli so vile lilifika jioni nikaanza kuwa na kichwa na niuma so vile lilifika 6 majangu ilikuwa ime lost imbalambala has been receiving treatment since he lost his eyesight vile nilianza medication nikiwa Nairobi mpaka nikakuja sabatia kumekuwa na watu wananisaidia family imekuwa ikinisaidia sana haya natamuka toka kwa roho yangu President Uhuru Kenyatta na Minister of Sports Amina Mohamed na waheshimu sana na wapenda ningewasii tu kama mnaweza chipin huyu kijana mwenye anaongea ambaye ni Martin Mbalabala site yake irudi venye ilikuwa naweza shukuru sana Manchester United missed a chance to climb into the English Premier League's top four after they were held to a 2-2 draw by Southampton at Old Trafford. Stuart Armstrong gave Southampton a 12-minute lead before Anthony Martial uh, equalised and Marcus Rashford sent United ahead. The hosts led 2-1 for 73 minutes before substitute Michael Obafemi scored in the 96th minute. Now, tonight, third place Chelsea will take on Norwich at Stamford Bridge as Arsenal entertain champions Liverpool tomorrow night at the Emirates Stadium. Martial coming in from that left and firing home. Now they say when it rains, it pours. And it has been pouring for one Liverpool fan who also happens to be a footballer whose team got promoted. Here is how Sahid Adebayo Akin Fenwa's fairy tale started. His team, Wickham Wanderers, wins promotion to the English Championship. During his very colorful post-match interview, Akin Fenua asked Liverpool coach Jurgen Klopp to call him. Well, that dream came true. Akin Fenua received a recorded message from Klopp in, uh, is that what is known as a win-win? Let's listen in. Congratulations. <laughs> Pretty sure you were all life, at least a championship player. Um, and now, finally, you are there. Well done. Great, great victory. Wow. Now, Real Madrid beat Granada 2-1 last night to move within two points of reclaiming the Spanish league title. Fallon Mendy and Karim Benzema scored first half goals to keep Madrid four points ahead of second place Barcelona with two rounds to go. Granada's goal was caught by Darwin Max. Madrid uh, can clinch their first title since 2017 on Thursday with a win at Villarreal. Or if Barcelona loses points when they host Osasuna, two draws in the final two rounds will also be enough to secure Madrid a record 34th league trophy. Benzema, beautiful counter-attack for Granada, five against four, and it's a chance for Machis, and he's taken it. Well, that does it for NTV Sport. Have a lovely night. All right, and the sports news does it for NTV tonight on this Tuesday night. Thanks very much for watching. Flora Atieno has been our sign language interpreter. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi. Do be sure to join us tomorrow at 9 p.m. on Team Coverage Wednesday. In the meantime, stay safe and have yourselves a good night. Bye-bye. This is NTV.
women find independence by training them in fish farming. Oh, it's tough on my back, joints, and can cause headaches. Panadol Extra relieves multiple types of pain. If symptoms persist, seek medical advice. Pata 50% extra credo bila expiry. Yakupiga na ku SMS across 